been a busy couple weeks with Tesla news, and yesterday was no different with the launch of the V3 supercharging architecture. We're going to talk about it all today. Stay tuned. So if you haven't heard, Tesla's been working on a version three, V3, of their supercharging technology. The idea here was to be able to provide a faster rate of charge for vehicles in order to make better use of all the existing uh, supercharger sites that they have. Well, last night they announced that they have accomplished version three, and it is wonderful. It's powered by a one megawatt cabinet, which is what they use in their utility spaces. And it's gonna be able to allow for 250 kilowatt charging at peak per vehicle. Now this is a big deal because if you've ever been to a, a supercharger and saw that there's like 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, that kind of numbering schema, if somebody else parks in your same number, your rate of charge decreases. With version three, Tesla's announced that that no longer happens. You will get the 250 peak charging per stall. So it's not dependent on the other cars around you anymore, which is awesome news. Additionally, by uh, enabling 250 kilowatt peak charging, they've now said that you can get 75 miles of charge in just five minutes. Just five minutes. This is a 50% improvement, and I don't want you, you know, you, people are going to be throwing around that 50% number quite a bit, and I want you to understand what it means. 25% of that is from enhancements in the supercharging system itself. The other 25% comes from software, and they're releasing a new feature called en route battery warm up. And what that is going to do is if you are navigating to a supercharger, it will automatically start a warm up routine on your battery pack to make sure that once you get to the supercharger, you're at an optimal temperature to be able to supercharge the most effectively. This is what gets you that additional 25%. So that's also very exciting news that through software, they're going to precondition your battery to be more consistent in the way in which it supercharges once you get to that location. So you might be wondering, what does 250 kilowatts actually mean? I don't understand what that number really does for me. Um, a normal supercharging stall right now is 120 kilowatts. And so that's essentially doubling the peak performance of a supercharger, which is tremendous news. What that really means, broken down to mileage per hour, which is what we you know can relate to, it's something we work with every day in the US. Mileage per hour at peak, you can get a thousand miles per hour of charge at peak rates. Now, granted, that's when your battery state of charge is lower, much lower, and that will not be able to be sustained for the duration of your charging session, but a thousand miles per hour. <laughs> it's just incredible to say and even think that is a reality, but uh, that's super exciting. Thousand miles per hour on the V3 framework. Now, according to all the data that Tesla has on supercharging sessions, an average supercharging session is around 30 minutes. And with all of these enhancements to speed and the preconditioning prior to arrival, they're estimating that a typical charging session will now last 15 minutes, so about half, which is really exciting. So you may be wondering, great, Jeff, uh, when is this going to happen? You know, it seems like a big undertaking. Well, you're right. It is a huge undertaking because from what I understand, this is not just a retrofit. They're not going to show up at a supercharging station, spend, you know, a day there and swap them all out. Um, it's it's like they're going to have to replace the actual stalls themselves. Um, it's not something they can just go in and replace the existing hardware within the supercharging terminal. So I believe it will take some time. Uh, there's a very ambitious schedule, uh, according to what Tesla has announced. They have pretty uh, ambitious hopes to get a lot of these retrofitted by the end of 2019. Who knows what that kind of looks like in terms of their schema. That's Tesla time versus reality, of course. Um, but I'm excited to hear that that's something that is a priority. I, I think it's it's very important to note that they also announced that they will be boosting the rate of charge through software to 145. So right now it's kind of software capped, much like the battery packs in a lot of their cars. It's software capped so that you really only are charging at that 120 kilowatt. They're going to unlock those charging rates in the next couple of weeks to 145 kilowatts. So you'll see a boost there right away. But to be able to effectively handle those 250 kilowatt speeds, it will require hardware replacement, which is what they're going to start working through in the US first in quarter two and three, and then uh, overseas in quarter four. 
Now, you also may be wondering what vehicles this actually applies to. And right now, it's only the Model 3. That's the only model that they've announced that will be fully compatible with these version 3 or V3 supercharging stations. You will still get, you know, you'll still be able to use them as a uh, Model S and Model X owner, but you will not be able to achieve the peak speeds uh, that are mentioned earlier in the video. That's kind of a misstep, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know what they could necessarily do about that, because unfortunately, I believe it's a hardware issue within the S and X vehicles. I don't think they have the capacity to actually charge at those rates with the charging hardware that they have within the vehicle. I think that will create a very interesting disparity between the lines, because your S and your X vehicles are your more expensive vehicles. However, your Model 3 now has a much higher rate of charge um, and quite honestly is much more convenient for a lot of people that spend time at superchargers. So that's going to be something that I'll be interested to see unfold over the coming weeks, see what plans they have for Model S and Model X owners. They did announce that through software updates, they will be able to up that rate of charge. But I do believe that that will probably be the 145 that I had mentioned earlier. So Tesla has 12,000 supercharging sites across the world. And in the coming weeks, they have said that through that software update or that unlocking, so to speak, all of them will be able to accomplish the 145 kilowatt charging, which is a great fix in the interim until they're able to hit all of them with the ver version three framework. In doing so, they're going to enable essentially double the capacity for supercharging sessions by the end of 2019, which is really exciting if you obviously reduce your charging speed times by 50%, it allows for double the amount of cars to be able to supercharge, which with the standard range version coming out and the flux over uh, the past few months in Model 3 owners, this will be a very important step for Tesla to be able to integrate additional opportunities for cars to supercharge on their network. So starting today, the early access program members of Model 3 owners only will have beta access to the only V3 supercharging station in existence. Now, that will obviously scale out as more become available, and Tesla even announced that they are breaking ground on their first true station in the coming weeks. Uh, it will take some time for these stations to be retrofitted, and then they will be able to start scaling out access to these stations as those projects are completed. So I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on a couple of things. Um, obviously, their attention will be focused on additional supercharging stations, but I think that they will prioritize first the retrofitting of existing stations. I want to know what you guys think about that. I know that that's probably why Tesla has pumped the brakes a little bit of opening new supercharging locations is because they knew that version three was on the precipice of being released. But let me know what you think about the difference between opening new locations versus upgrading existing ones, which one you feel should be first. Additionally, I'd love to know, what are you going to do with all this extra time? First of all, comment below, what do you do with the time while you're at the supercharger? Secondly, what are you going to do with the spare time now that you're going to be 50% there less if you're a regular supercharger? Um, you know, it's always interesting to hear what people do with the half hour or so that they have in their car at a supercharger. I'd love to hear what you've been doing as well. Until next time, guys, if you have any questions about what was announced last night, I'd love to be able to interact with you in the comments. Feel free to leave your questions below. If you have any, um, you know, pearls of wisdom with regards to the supercharging unveil last night. I'd love to hear them as well. If I missed anything, certainly leave those in the comments below as well to help out the other people on this channel. Um, I certainly appreciate, you know, you guys keeping tabs on what's going on in Tesla news as well and sharing it with me. With everything that's going on at Tesla right now, with all the new announcements, certainly hit the subscribe button because I'll be covering all of it as the news becomes available. I'm certainly looking forward to talking with you in the comments and until next time, hope you have a wonderful week. Take care.